Good morning, Cornerstone family. I hope you are having a wonderful Sunday so far. Um, I want to announce that next Sunday, we are going to be together in person outside of the church. We're so excited to see you once again and to spend that time together. Um, also, our kids camp, as you know, is coming up very quickly. We have the online version and also an in-person version. So be sure to register your kids and to invite any neighbors, friends, family that you have in the area so they can register their kids as well. Just want to read a couple of verses to open up our time together. This is found in Psalm 25 verses 4 and 5. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. So let's pray together. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you that that you show us the path, that you teach us your ways, that you give us that, that clarity, that understanding to be able to follow you with everything that we are and everything that we have. I ask that this morning that you would go deeper into our hearts, Lord, that you would show us the way, that you would teach us how to follow you and how to be obedient to your voice, God. We thank you for this time together. Pray for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> worship God cornerstone let's give him everything that we've got celebrate how great he is that great story he's given you of grace and goodness and faith and, and hope and love oh God you're good Lord we praise you today almighty God everything you do is good and just and perfect we honor you today Lord we honor you Lord here we go let's sing this together 
Everything God does is perfect. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. Almighty God, the eyes can't see the way you hold me.
All right, church, uh, I've got just a short uh, update here. We have a video uh, that Brianne sent us just to bring uh, greetings. Of course, uh, Brianne Pierce, de Grardado. Uh, fan, I, I gotta learn how to roll my R's. Andy, you're gonna have to uh, forgive me uh, for butchering your last name, but Andy and Brianne are our missionaries from here in El Salvador. And uh, we miss Brianne very much. She's been gone, I think it's, it's gotta be close to two years, uh, this summer maybe, and um, and what I want to do is I want to challenge you to give today. Uh, I want to challenge you to, to add to your offering today as you, you know, send your e-transfer in or drop your, your, your check in the mail for the church with your you know, regular tithes and offerings. I want to challenge you um, to give. To send in something extra for Brienne, maybe uh, maybe you want to start being a monthly supporter, and you can say, you know, I, I'm here, ten dollars a month. I, I want to send that in, and then be faithful to that, or twenty, twenty five dollars a month to to support one of our own as she's living out what God has called her to do. Uh, so please take a minute, pray about it, and think, Lord, what can I do to invest uh, in what Brienne is doing in the kingdom of God in El Salvador? Ah, Brienne, if you're watching with us today, we we love you, we miss you. And we're so glad that God is doing great things in your life. Ah, in, in, enjoy, church. Hi. Hi, Cornerstone. Hola, Cornerstone. How are you? How are you doing? It's so great to be able to um, greet you in this way and just send you a little update on how we're doing. We're here in El Salvador, hot and sweaty. We live in a very, very hot area of El Salvador. <laughs> and uh, out in a rural community um, before if you remember we lived um, in a little town and now we live in a little community that is not even a town <laughs> it's very small uh, but there are people here and there are people who need to know the Lord and so um, we want to say thank you to you thank you for all of your prayers we know that you constantly lift us up in prayer and that is so encouraging just to know that we have um, that spiritual battle, you know, warriors behind us praying for us. Um, just as a quick testimony, I know that many of you were praying for my throat infection that I was suffering with. It was getting very serious. And um, thank you to all of your prayers and glory to God. Um, he healed me completely two days ago and just took all the pain away, healed me completely. So thank you so much for your prayers. God is good. God is powerful. And not only uh, are we seeing him move in that way, but we're seeing him move in the community and how he's stirring in people's hearts. He's bringing people to him. And we're just really, um, our heart is to be faithful to the Lord in the commitments that he's placed us in, but also just spirit led walking through the doors that he places in front of us, allowing us to build uh, relationships in the community. We're seeing him open up doors just to be able to love and serve people right where they're at in our community. 
Um, one example is right now there's no water in our community. No water is getting to any of the homes and so Andy has been able to um, be getting water from the well at the church, filling up barrels and bringing water to people's homes so they at least are able to take a shower and, you know, make some coffee, mm -hmm. um, wash some dishes. But just things like that uh, really open up doors and allow us to build relationships in the community. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we're really grateful um, for everything that God is doing, his great provision. You guys are a big part of that as well. Thank you to everyone who supports us, for the church who supports us. Um, you are part of what God's doing here in El Salvador. And we would just love to sit down and have a coffee with you and just be able to share more about what God is doing. But um, for now, we'll leave it at that. Just leave you with a big thank you. Send you a big hug from here in El Salvador and really hope to be able to see you soon. We really pray that um, we'll be able to one day, not too long in the future, be able to head out to Canada and uh, see you all in person once again and, and all you to be able to meet Andy and give you a nice big hug. So thanks so much, guys. And we love you, and we're praying for you as well. And God bless. God bless you. All right, church, let's jump into it today. Uh, we are just kind of coming, getting close to the end of our Find Your Voice series, uh, talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. We started on, on Pentecost Sunday. But of course, like the Holy Spirit's not just limited to Pentecost Sunday. Every day is our Pentecost Sunday as we have an opportunity to be filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with power, filled with joy, filled with love, filled with all the blessings of God. And we receive that. I mean, just as a fact that we're a child of, of the King. Uh, so every day, today is Pentecost Sunday. And next week will be Pentecost Sunday as we look forward to uh, just receiving the blessings of God. So today we're going to continue with this. We are going to be in Acts chapter 5. Uh, just a, a bit of a reminder, next Sunday we are going to be meeting here at the Cornerstone. We're going to be together again. We're going to meet outside. Um, you know, in, in God's great open air cathedral out in the backyard. So bring your lawn chair with you, bring your sunglasses, uh, bring your, your fan, because it, it, it's been hot. It has been hot lately. So uh, we look forward to being with you. Uh, we, we've got communion. Uh, we're going to do that together. We're going to worship God. Uh, Courtney is going to be bringing the word of God that day. And we are looking forward just to being together uh, once again. I, I think we've been away. Yeah, it's been like two, two and a half months. And it will be nice. Um, it'll be nice to see you. Nice to worship God with you. Uh, so before we get going, why don't we pray? Let's just invite the Lord to move in us, invite Holy Spirit uh, to speak directly to all of us uh, wherever we are and, and whenever we're watching. Uh, God wants to do good things in your life. He wants to bring you closer to Him. He wants to uh, bless you, fill you with the Holy Ghost, to fill you with power, give you authority and boldness for everything you need to do for Him. So let's let's come before Him. Do something with me. Hold your hands out. And let's, let's just get in a an attitude where we're ready to receive from the Lord. Mighty God, we give you thanks for today, and we just receive from you today. Holy Spirit, uh, be near to us, and let us be aware of your presence right here, uh, as, as folks are in their living rooms, as, as folks are sitting on the patio, uh, wherever they may be. Let them just have a great sense of your Holy Spirit, that you're with us, that you're near, and that you want to pour blessing out in our lives, that you want to richly uh, give us everything that we need. You don't hold anything back, and we thank you for that, Lord. So today, we come before you with, with open hands, ready to receive. Father, we come before you with, with an open heart. We want to hear your, your voice today. So would you cleanse us of every sin? Cast it out. We confess freely everything that we've done wrong, and we ask you, Lord, just to give us a sense of peace and joy as we move forward with you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Acts chapter 5. Last week we talked about the disciples they, and the believers. Uh, Peter and John were arrested. And the people were praying, and then they got out, and they were wondering just how do we pray now? And they prayed, Oh, Sovereign Lord. What a great way to start our prayers. Oh, Sovereign Lord. Just with a, uh, yep, yeah, Lord, that's who you are. You're the God who is you know, large and in charge. And they prayed, you know, enable your servant to speak your will, your word with great boldness. And that's been my prayer for you uh, all week long. And I've been praying that prayer, and I've been inviting God, you know, give me great boldness. Give me an opportunity. Opportunity to speak with with boldness to, to everyone 
that I'm with. It's, it started a couple of really interesting spiritual conversations, and I hope that it started some good things uh, with you as well. So Acts chapter 5, uh, this is kind of the next step uh, after this believer's prayer in Acts chapter 4. We get a little discussion about what the early church's community was like as they lived together under the power of the Holy Spirit. Some really exciting stuff. Uh, we read about Ananias and Sapphira at the start of chapter 5. They were faking it and uh, yeah God wasn't pleased with that as at all at all I, I got big news I got great news for you my family after living in the wilderness of cat ownership for a long time now we are dog people again oh it's, it's changing everything our whole house is it's uh, it, I don't know our attitudes have improved some of it having a dog in the house and a little puppy uh, really uh, does wonders I think for the soul so we, we picked up uh, Winnie and adopted her into our family a, a little itty bitty uh, golden doodle who will not stay itty bitty for a oh, very long I know uh, but we've kind of forgotten what it's like to have a puppy in the house. It's been a long time since we've had a puppy in our home. 20 years. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm feeling old saying that anytime you put 20 years into something. Yeah. Yeah. You're ancient. Uh, but 20 years ago, we had a little poodle, a toy poodle that uh, we loved and loved and loved. And, and I think with time, you kind of gloss over all the problems. And we forgot that when, when we brought Winnie home, uh, that she's never been on a leash. She's never been in a crate. She's <laughs> never had any of these experiences. She doesn't know how to do anything. And you kind of need to train your dog and teach your dog. And, and so the first night we're kind of forgetting, oh yeah, dogs don't sleep the whole night when they're a puppy in new surroundings. And, and she's in the crate. You know, roo, roo, roo. And then she starts howling. And I mean, it, it's super cute. It's super cute to hear this. I roo. It, uh, but it's not cute at 2.30 in the morning and at 3.30 in the morning and then at 5 in the morning. And, uh, okay, it's interesting, it's good, but it's interesting. And, and the dogs, they, they, don't, they don't come trained. You got to train them. You got to teach them that. And when you, you, you have her on the leash and you want her to follow you, well, well she doesn't know that. She doesn't know the leash because she hasn't learned it. You want her to obey you and she want her to listen to you, but she's not quite there yet. You know, come. She doesn't know come. She doesn't know stay. She doesn't know stop biting my toes. She doesn't know stop biting the pillow. <laughs> You got to train her in that and, 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 and grow that in, in your puppy and, and eventually, you, you know, it'll all work out well and, and things will be good and we're looking forward to that day. We're loving the puppy stage, but man, the, ah, rah, 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 in the middle of the night is a bit much is a bit much. Now, Coco never did that, so maybe I shouldn't say the wilderness when referring to my cat, but nonetheless, this idea of obedience, you, you want to see that. You want to see that your, your dog is obedient. Absolutely. You want your kids to be obedient, and, and when, like, when it comes to like following the law and driving your car, the police wants you to be obedient, and probably you want to as well, because you don't want to get those those tickets. Uh, so, so we see in Acts chapter 5 this idea of obedience coming in and that God is calling us to things and, and God is calling us to obedience. And that I think is kind of one of the things that the Holy Spirit does for us is leads us in obedience as we feel the leading and the direction of the Holy Spirit to do things for God. Um, God is anticipating an affirmative response that we would say yes, that we would say, here I am, use me, here I am, send me, I'll go whatever you want, and just don't send me to Africa, um, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever you want, God. And, and so here in Acts chapter 5, we're going to jump right into this. We're going to read a little bit, uh, we're going to give some lessons along the way, and then I want to leave you with a mighty blessing at the end, all right? Here we go. Uh, starting in verse 17 of Acts 5, it says, Then the high priest and all of his associates, not some of them, all of them, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, they were filled with jealousy, which is kind of in character. So they arrested the apostles. And I, I mean, right there, okay, we've been down this road. We did this last week. They were arrested, yes. But I mean, I've never been arrested. I don't ever want to be arrested. I don't even want a traffic ticket. Not at all. That, that's not a conversation you want to have. You want to know that I'm doing the right thing all through my life. But sometimes, 
when God is calling us to be obedient to Him, it's not necessarily going to be smooth sailing all the time. Now, I'm not saying that when you say yes to God that you're going to get arrested for what you do. I hope that's not uh, you know, where our country is at. But certainly we should kind of expect you know, some opposition. And it should be natural because, you know, the people that, that we're dealing with all day long and the people in our workplaces, perhaps the people in your home who, who don't you know, follow Jesus yet, they're, they're not moving really in the same direction you are. So we should expect a little bit of pushback. But I mean, that's okay. It, it's okay for us to, to face opposition as followers of Jesus. And Jesus tells us to kind of expect it all through like the Gospels. It's, yeah, you guys are going to have trouble along the way. But I think we can manage it. And I think that, okay, yeah, I can take so much. I can handle this. Uh, because, because this world is not my home. Because I'm, uh, I'm going to live with Jesus someday. My citizenship is in heaven. I'm living for eternity. I'm not living for like the 70 or 80 years or 90 years uh, that, that I have here on earth. I, I'm, I'm living for what God has for me in eternity. So what happens here and now, like with my stuff and with my, my mortal body? Yeah, that, that's, that's not of ultimate concern to me. What's of ultimate concern to me is, is things that are going to last in eternity. And so I, I put that, you know, all that, that God is calling me to do through the lens of, I don't live here. I'm just here temporarily. God, whatever you want from me, even if there's like some opposition and some trouble along the way, I, I, yeah, I'm willing to jump into that with you. I am ready to be used by God. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, I'm ready to be used by God. So Peter and John, you know, they were arrested last week. And, and here we see that these uh, religious leaders, these uh, Sadducees, they were filled with jealousy. And they arrested the apostles and they put them in the public jail. Oh, come on. We don't even get the special jail. No, we get the public jail. But during the night, and I love every time in the Bible, it's like God shows you something bad that happens. Happens and then throws a butt in there because butt changes everything that just happened. It says, but during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. See, yeah, okay, yeah, we should expect a little bit of opposition, a little bit of pushback, but you know what we really should be expecting? We, we should be expecting supernatural, Holy Ghost, power of God, mountain-moving experiences. Everywhere the disciples went, everywhere these early believers went, they encountered these great signs and wonders. And they were amazed by people who were healed and people were delivered. People were set free of evil spirits. People's lives were completely turned around. Their outlook on their circumstances changed because of what God was doing in their lives. And, and I'm sure you've seen evidences of, of miracles in your own life. You've seen the ways that God has strengthened you and, and healed you. Well, just, just in the past week, last Sunday night, we were praying in our prayer meeting. I'm sure many of you saw on, on Facebook, uh, Brienne uh, Pierce, our, our, our girl, our, our missionary, uh, was very, very sick. I mean, she had you know, COVID a month ago or two months ago, but you know, that was nothing. But now this, this throat infection was, was horrible, and, and she's struggling, and she invited you know, people to pray. And Sunday night, we prayed, and we sent an email off to Brienne letting her know, hey, we're praying for you. And then the very next day, and now I'm not claiming that, that it was our prayers that did it, but hey, we were praying too. Uh, you know, the next day she posts a video saying, hey, God healed me. Something happened and, and I can't, like, I don't know, but I just, I just want to give God the glory. Go, go and check the video. We posted it to our Facebook. Uh, you can find it easily of how God moved in her life. And maybe you've experienced that too. Maybe you've seen God answer a prayer in a mighty way. Maybe you were praying for something and, or praying for someone and maybe it was somebody who didn't know Jesus and maybe God showed up and just did a magnificent thing in their lives and it should be natural for the people of God for the church of God that as we do things in God's name and especially as we do things under the power of the Holy Spirit we should expect miracles we should expect signs and wonders we should expect things to happen that cannot possibly happen in the natural we should expect God to move. And here in the middle of this 
in the middle of this <laughs> being thrown in prison and, and I love that Luke when he's writing this story he doesn't like like make a big deal about how bad the prison was it was just it was a public jail he doesn't say you know well the cells were dirty or that there was mice or the food wasn't great he just says hey well, they're throwing in in jail he just kind of glosses over all that stuff because the big news of the day is not that they were thrown in jail. The big news is that the angel of the Lord came and visited them while they were in prison and opened the doors and set them free. I mean, how cool is that? How would you like that, that when you know that I am going forward in Jesus' name, that I am doing something great for him, and I am, you know, being obedient to my calling, and I'm going out with this power and this authority, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I, I just feel the boldness and the authority of God flowing through my veins. How would it feel to know that God wants to move mountains in your life every single day? That he wants to solve problems, strengthen your body. He wants to heal people that you're praying for. He wants to deliver people that you're praying for. How would that feel to walk around with that confidence knowing that, hey, my circumstances might not be great. I might be catching a bit of flack. I might have, you know, a little bit of pushback from people I'm talking to. But my goodness, I am able to move in the power of Almighty God. And God is, he's coming through. Like, God hears my prayers, and he's answering them. He's solving every problem. And, I mean, just, just praise God for that. They're, they're arrested, put in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. And I love that Acts says, or that Luke says that this is the angel of the Lord because all through the Bible we see the angel of the Lord popping up. The angel of the Lord came to Abraham. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon when he was hiding in that wine press. The angel of the Lord shows up right when God's about to do something meaningful. The angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. And Peter and John have... The disciples in that prison have got to be thinking something big is coming. Okay, this is going to be good. Let's keep going. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. And this was his instruction to them. Go and stand in the temple courts and tell the people all about this new life. Now, okay, I'm a pastor. I've been serving Jesus my whole life. Since I was like four years old, I've loved Jesus. Uh, I've confessed my sin to him. I was filled with the Spirit when I was 14 or 15. I, I you know, went to, to Bible college. I uh, have pastored for 20 years. I, I'm now in, in seminary learning more. If I was thrown in jail, and if the angel came and opened the doors, I mean, that would be fantastic. But if the angel sent me back out to do the same thing that I was arrested for, that I was put in a jail, I might have a little bit of pause <laughs> there. I might, uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, angel of the Lord. And I, I know you're giving me the word from God, but I was just arrested and thrown in the public jail. And I mean, Luke might not have shared with you the details, but the food is the pits. This stuff is bad. They, 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 they ruined porridge. Come on now, this, this is not a good thing for me. <laughs> you guys, I want you to go right back to doing what you were doing. What you were doing was the right thing. Even though you faced opposition, even though you were arrested, even though you were thrown in jail, I want you to go back out and tell the people about this new life. And I mean, this, this, is, not, this is not for everybody. This is not for everybody. See, that's why Jesus said, you need to wait in the upper room for the promised Holy Spirit. I have to go so that the Holy Spirit can come to you. And I mean, if Jesus is saying that it's, it's good for me to go so that you can get what you need, because Jesus was pretty awesome. <laughs> Jesus did some pretty fantastic things. And he said, I got to go so that you can get what you need. Okay, so maybe the Holy Spirit is going to do good things in me. Give me the power, the authority, the boldness, the unction, the words, everything that I need to, to do God's will. I mean, that helps, right? That gives us a little bit of wind in our sails. That gives us a little bit of confidence, a little bit of boldness, a little bit of, I think I can do this. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Yeah, I, I, I know that you know, it's not going to be necessarily smooth sailing all the time, but I feel God is with me. 
I feel God is doing something here in me. And so if this angel of the Lord is calling me, or, or maybe for us, if we see, feel the Spirit leading us, or we feel this direction in our life that I need to be about this thing, then maybe, maybe we can go and do it. Maybe we can just step out of faith and go back into the temple courts and into the streets and into the, the highways and the markets. and our, We can just, yeah, we can tell people all about this new life. I wonder, like... I don't, how big is our church? If, if like, uh, before COVID, we were seeing, like, what, like, 85, 90 people on a Sunday morning. Our larger family is, you know, 150, 160, 70 people. That would call the Cornerstone home. What would happen if all of us began to hear from God and began to get, a, like, a direction from God of what to do? And, and what if, what if each one of us, all 150, 60, 70 of us, were, were filled with the Spirit, and we, we felt God moving in us and leading us and, and all this stuff? We had power and, and boldness. And what if each one of us found our voice to say something for Jesus? I'm still holding on to that note that I've been talking about all month. What would happen if the cornerstone found their voice to say something for Jesus? What if we walked in obedience to what God was calling us to do and we just went and, and did it? What if that was like our story? What if that was like the cornerstone ethos? What if that was in our DNA, in our being? And that's, that's just what we did. Hey, we're saying yes to God, whatever he wants. Yes, we're going to be filled with the Spirit so that we can have everything that we need. What if we just went out and did what God was calling us to do? And we, we found our voice and then we, we did it. And we said something for Jesus. What would that do in our communities? How would that change things around? I mean, we look around and we see problems everywhere we go. We see things that we're not happy with. We see that, like, like there's, there's drugs in our community. We see that people have a dependency the, you know, pills or crystal meth or whatever it is. We see people that, that are living with frustration and, and depression, anxiety in their lives. God wants to address that. What would happen if, if we found our voice to say something to that? What would happen, like, 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 like we see, uh, we, we have a casino in our town. And uh, yeah, it employs a lot of people, but we have a casino in our town. It's separating folks from their money, and quite often it's poor folks separating them from their money. I think that's a blessing for our town. We see all these problems everywhere we go, and what would happen if, if the cornerstone found their voice to speak up and say something for Jesus. Let's, let's track this story a little further. At daybreak, <laughs> immediately, uh, the disciples, all these believers, entered the temple courts as they had been told. And they began to teach the people. And when the high priest and the associates arrived, like the bad news is the, the bad thing, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and they sent to the jail for the apostles, because we're going to bring these guys out, we're going to question them. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and they reported, we found the jail securely locked. I guess the angel, when he opened the doors, he locked them on the way out. Uh, with the guards, they were standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found uh, none of these guys inside. And on hearing this report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priest were at a, at a loss. They were wondering what this might lead to. They thought their jobs were not quite secure at that moment. Then somebody came and said, uh, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts and they're teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they were afraid and they thought the people might stone them. The people would turn on them and riot. So the apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned before the high priest. We gave you guys strict orders not to teach in his name, yet you have have filled Jerusalem with your teaching. It's not just that they went to one spot and were teaching, but they filled the whole city with this teaching, and you are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And Peter and the other apostles, they replied, and get this, underline this in your Bible, we must obey God rather than human beings. We got to obey God. I mean, that's our highest authority. That's who we follow. We're not going to listen to you guys. 
the God of our ancestors, raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on the cross. God exalted him uh, to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things. We saw it with our own eyes. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who would obey him. And so these guys were furious at this, and they wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honored by all the people, he stood up in the Sanhedrin, and he ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin, men of Israel. Consider carefully what you intend to do with these men. Some time ago, there's a guy, Thutis, and they all nodded. Yeah, we remember Thutis. He appeared claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men. That's a good crowd. 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, <laughs> and his followers dispersed, and it became nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean. Oh, yeah, I remember Judas the Galilean. He appeared in the days of the census, and he led a band of people in revolt. He, too, was killed, and all of his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. Let them go. For if their purpose, get this, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. And that, that's, that's true. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. Interesting, because here we are 2,000 years later, and we're still talking about Jesus. Obviously, this is not for men. So the, uh, uh, his speech persuaded the Sanhedrin. They called the apostles in. They had them flogged, or, or they had them beaten. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. They wagged their fingers, you better not, or else. They'd done that in Acts 4 as well. So verse 41, I love this one too. The apostles left the Sanhedrin, and they were <laughs> rejoicing. They were rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name of Jesus. And day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Oh my goodness. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. They were beaten and sent out with orders, instructions. You better not talk about Jesus anymore. And what did they do day after day, every day, and wherever they were, in the temple courts, house to house, they talked about Jesus all the time. All the time. They weren't hindered by anything because they knew that what they were talking about was of eternal significance. And here we are now, 2,000 years later. 2,000 years later. Uh, let me, let, let me wrap up with this. Let me wrap them up. Right at the start of Jesus' ministry, uh, Jesus at the wedding feast in Cana, and they, they, ran out of, uh, they ran out of wine, or grape juice, however you read the passage. They ran out either way. And uh, Mary wants Jesus to solve the problem, and she says to the servants, she turns uh, to those servants, and she says, you guys... You need to do whatever he tells you to do. Do whatever he tells you to do. Just walk in obedience. Do the thing that God has called you to do. And when you, you get that, when you hear that word, when you receive that direction from God, you just go. You don't question it. You don't wonder. You don't make up excuses. You just go under the power of the Holy Ghost. You go and you do that thing. These, these apostles... Something happened in their heart. Something happened that day on that first Pentecost Sunday. Something happened when the Holy Spirit came in, filled them to overflowing with power, with boldness, with authority, with blessing, with favor, with joy. Something happened that day that changed them forever. Thrown in prison? Doesn't matter. Insulted? Doesn't matter. Kicked out of town? Doesn't matter. Beaten? 
doesn't matter. <laughs> Thrown in prison again, doesn't matter. Threats don't matter. Why? Because we're talking about Jesus. This is the good news. This is the solution to everybody's problem and for every problem and all through history. And you and I, we carry this around with us everywhere we go. What would happen, church, if the cornerstone found their voice to say something for Jesus? What would happen if you found your voice to say something for Jesus? Think about your workplace, your family, your coffee shop. Ah, oh, what would happen? What would happen is the people of God go forward in Jesus' name full of power and authority to do what God has called us to do. Every week we've been praying for people to be filled with the Spirit. And I'm going to pray for you again that today you'd be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you know, with the sign of speaking in tongues. Uh, you're not filled to speak in tongues, but it's just kind of the idea that the, the, the sign that, that we receive from God, that we know it's happened. And so we pray that for you. And if you'd like us to pray for you, you come to the prayer meeting tonight on Zoom and we'd love to pray with you. Uh, we're moving mountains every Sunday night. Every Sunday night. Next Sunday, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit again. Uh, as we're outside here at the Cornerstone, we're going to be praying for people to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You come then expecting and waiting and hoping God to do great things in you that day. But let's pray together today. Let's pray that we receive the Spirit. Let's pray that we find our voice. Let's pray that we walk in obedience. All right, Father in heaven, you have called us. You have picked us out, chosen us from out of the crowd. You have called us by your name and planted our feet on solid ground. Father, you have provided your Holy Spirit. You have poured it out on your church. And Father, we receive it from you today. For every one of my friends who's joining with me today, I pray, Lord, for the blessed and the promised Holy Ghost. Let them be filled to overflowing today and in this moment as they seek you earnestly, Lord. Let them receive from you. Father, I pray for our church, for our extended family, and we ask you, Lord, that you would lead each one of us to find our voice to say something for Jesus, something that will turn somebody's eternity completely around, that would bring them into the family of God, give them hope and joy and a future with you, Jesus. I pray a mighty blessing on my brothers and sisters as we go out now as we return, Lord, to, to your mission field. The Bible says that the fields are white unto harvest, just waiting for that crop to come in. Accomplish your will in us, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you guys. We look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, yeah, outside at the Cornerstone. Oh, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. God bless you very much.